Hello and welcome to another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. My name is Trevor Lewis. Today what we're going to be talking about is how to make a cookie cutter in X-Design. We are going to be using offset, uh, we're going to be using trim, and then we're going to extrude the walls of the cookie cutter. So the first thing you need to do is you have to get a sense of scale. Um, so what I what if you have a ruler, this is really not so hard to do. What you do is we are using millimeters. So what I do is I imagine how big I want my cookie to be. Now you can't have too big a cookie because uh, there's a couple reasons. One is if you make a really big cookie cutter like this, um, you're gonna end up with um, uh, something that might be too big for your 3D printer. And you're also going to end up with something that when you cut out the cookie and you bake it, the edges are going to burn and the center is going to be raw. There's a reason that cookies are cookie sized. So go ahead and make your hands like cookie sized forever what size cookie. And then you hold it on the ruler. So you kind of hold your hands like uh, cookie size. You hold it up against the ruler. You look at the centimeter side and you remember to multiply by 10 to get millimeters. So if you're looking at 20, for example, that would be 200 millimeters. That's what we'll use in this video, but I think that's probably too big. So make sure that you make your own decision about how big to make it. Um, I'm going to start with the XY plane, and I'm going to start with some circles. I recommend that you start with circles with me at first. Um, and if you want to start with circles with me at first, um, you can uh, always go back and do your own design later. So now these grids actually give us a little bit of a starting place. Since I'm in millimeters, these darker grids here, they're 100 millimeters. So 200 was what I said. So I, I would want my cookie to stop here and start here. So I can just use those and estimate. That would be one way to do it. Um, so if you're making things that are multiple grids big, that's too big for a cookie. Cutter, for a cookie. So I'm going to make my cookie shape first. So first thing I do is I draw my cookie. I'm going to draw a circle. I can't see what's going on here, so I'm going to push the top here so I can see a little bit better. So there's my first circle, and I'm going to draw another circle, and I'm going to overlap them. And I get a little guide there for how big my last circle was. I don't want it to be as big. And then I'm going to slide up here, and I'm going to draw a third circle. I think you can see that I'm going for a snowman here. It's a very simple shape to draw. And then I'm going to use the trim tool here. And I'm just going to drag across those center lines to get rid of them. This is what I want, a simple outline. The way you can tell that you've done it right is if you put your pencil down on the line, you can draw all the way around the line and draw the whole thing without picking up your pencil and without crossing any lines. So that's my snowman. I have found that circles and, square and rectangles offset OK Polygons offset okay, ellipses have trouble, and splines are just a no-go right now. I'm hoping that some updates from X-Design will allow all of these things to be offset. If you are drawing with a spline because you're trying to make something really fancy, what you're going to need to do is instead of using the offset tool, which is what we're about to use to automatically draw the lines, you're just going to need to draw another spline a certain distance away. But before I do that, i got to make sure this is the right size. So if I wanted it to be 200, this is obviously not 200 because from here to here is 200. So to make it the right size, I need to use my sketch dimension tool right here. Nothing is dimensioned yet. So if I click on an edge, I should be able to click on both those edges. And you can see that's 140 millimeters. If I want to make it 200, I just click there and type in 200. Now it's 200. You see the grid adjusted. So now I need to make this thickness thin enough so that it'll cut through the cookie, but thick enough that it'll actually print. Uh, anything less than a millimeter is really flimsy, so you want it to be at least a millimeter. You don't want it to be much thicker than that. Um, I'm not going to do mine to the right number because because I made my cookie cutter too big, it will look proportionally too thin. So, But I'm going to offset. So what I'll do to offset is I'm going to choose this tool right here. And offset will create a line. If I click on the inside here, so I select that object, you can see if I zoom in here, it's creating a line. Oh, it's actually failing to create the line. I don't think that's why I can't see it. So let's grab this arrow and drag. See, there's the line. See the yellow line? If I get too close there and the, the, two, the yellow lines hit each other in the middle, it's going to fail. I actually want to go outwards, though, because this is the cookie. I want my cutter to live outside the cookie. I don't want to extrude that cookie part. So again, one millimeter minimum, but I don't want it to look that thin. If it looks that thin, your cookie's probably too big. Um, you know, you probably want it to be about... You want it to look something like something like that for the cutter part. 
Um, and I like to, what I like to do is I like to do a second offset right now while I'm at it. And what I'll do with this second offset is I will go even further out. And this one is for the handle part. So this is adding extra strength since we're putting it out of plastic. It's really helpful um, versus like a metal cookie cutter. Usually this is just a rolled edge that adds a little bit of stiffness, but we need to add a little bit more. So I've got the cookie and the inside. Then I've got this thin cutter part and then I got this thicker handle. The thin cutter part needs to stick up far enough so that it goes through the dough and my fingers don't get in the cookie when I cut it. And the handle only needs to add a little bit of thickness. So I'm ready to extrude these. So I've got this all set up. I'm gonna extrude some stuff. Okay, so I ran into a couple of differences with SolidWorks there. Let's, let's try this again. I'm gonna take my sketch here and I'm gonna choose extrude. And I think what I'm gonna actually want to do is allow it to extrude both those because I, it's hard for me to access the other sketch, but I'm still going only, uh, this is as tall as I want my handle to be proportionally. I wouldn't use these actual numbers. And then once I have that object, I'm ha well, the thing I'm having trouble doing is getting access to that sketch again. So let's see if we can offset on this surface here. So to offset on the surface, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new sketch. I'm gonna click on the top surface to set my sketch plane on that as that top surface plane. Then I'm gonna choose offset and it says select entities to offset. And I'm gonna choose the whole face by clicking on it like that. And you can see by default it went outwards there, the same amount that I did before. But I actually wanna go inwards this time and create a thin part and Proportionally, I would say you would want it to look something like that. That thickness should be end up being, you know, a little bit more than a millimeter, not much more than that. Um, you can see that it's filling in the inside here, so we might have to make some more adjustments here. But let's go ahead and extrude this. And by choosing extrude, oh, it figured it out. And I, it knows I only want that part. So now how much taller do I want that part to be? That's not enough, okay? So uh, again, the numbers is not what I'm looking at here, but proportionally, I want this to stick up quite far because the cookie is gonna be up in this region and then you gotta have room between where the cookie dough stops and where your fingers are gonna wrap around this handle. So I'm gonna go about proportionally like that. Again, your numbers should be different because your cookie cutter should be smaller than mine. But this is better than shelling because you can see on the inside, the inside surface goes straight down all the way to the bottom. There's not gonna be any overhangs, not gonna be any weird sp spots for cookie dough to collect. So this is my finished cookie cutter. Um, if you wanna make a better design than a snowman, um, you can composite that design with different shapes or you can use a spline tool. But again, with the spline tool, instead of using offset, which was a little tricky to do, honestly, um, you're going to just draw this inside line, draw this outside line, draw another outside line, extrude those things separately. So there's going to be a little bit more drawing if you're using the spline tool.